ambition is probably quite a complicated one for me culturally because it's not something that we're encouraged to nurture in ourselves potentially uh collective ambition like ambition of our community and the peoples that um we care about our families is probably something more comfortable when i think about that word so like my my ambition for my family being able to have the best life that they possibly can in our specific communities here in Aotearoa not being held back by anything um, but yeah I think about it in the collective rather than the individual. So when you think about collective ambition do you describe yourself would you describe yourself as ambitious? Uh, for some reason I feel really uncomfortable about that, that like uh, thinking that I would potentially consider myself ambitious I probably if I'm honest yeah I, I, I'm definitely an ambitious person and, and co like as um, someone who's like strong ambitions for Pacific people to have the best lives that we can here in Aotearoa and through the Pacific region. Um, where, where do you think that discomfort with the concept comes from? Um, well, I suppose in our upbringing as Pacific people, as a Samoan person, we're not really taught to... Uh, our life is not our own in a sense, even if we are the, the current masters of this part of the journey for our families we're carrying and we're alongside our ancestors who still speak through our culture our language and our heritage and so it's it's carrying on the legacy maybe more than ambition so if i were to ask you to describe someone that you think of as ambitious what would pop into your mind um, often when I look at ambition I potentially have seen people lose who they are and journey to something that uh, means they compromise on whatever and that's kind of not that doesn't sit well with me a, a lot of ambition I see is unhealthy but then there uh -huh. is healthy ambition. I suppose if I was thinking about what's a stereotype, when I think of the word ambition, it's someone who's probably compromised things about themselves to fit in. And I think of a politician maybe, that they can't really say what they genuinely believe sometimes because they're part of this team that has these values which might conflict with their own personal values. Um, but I think there's, there's, as I say, like the, the ambition that we can... Um, not look at people in deficits and we can be free of racism and that we can have systems which are decolonized so that kind of ambition i think is really healthy although that's not the ambition that i sometimes feel is tied with that word but um it, it can be and it should be for us our collective ambition around COVID was no loss of life is okay and we can't talk about it as though there is a trade-off the, the, we're talking about human lives and, and so yeah that that is one ambition I won't forget and I suppose the other one is someone living in Christchurch is responding to what Muslim communities have said after March 15 and us dealing with the underbelly of racism and discrimination and, and challenges that multicultural peoples have here in Aotearoa and that Māori have had since before the Te Te Tiriti was signed that we can be a country which honours Te 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 or Waitangi and, and, and lives and breeds equity. And so I suppose in our COVID response too, that's another tranche that those things would um, be addressed as well. And that, that is a less clear ambition. There's a lot of New Zealanders who aren't on board with those things. Um, probably not as, as divisive as maybe what we see in the States at the moment, um, but definitely, yeah. Some people are, are waiting for people to pass away due to old age and things because of the, the attitudes that they've been brought up with. And that's one vision of some New Zealanders who believe that that's the only way some of those attitudes will go away. I, I don't have that hope. I have an ambition that we can see each other as, as fellow Kiwis, as people who want to value our Indigenous language here and the culture and the, the ways of mana whenua are Indigenous people which help enrich our collective well-being and our story around the world. If I were to take this word ambition off the table and talk to you about 
um, some of the other words that people have used for me are, are their, their dreams, their desires, mm. their, their their wishes for a better future. What what motivates you in your life and your work in that kind of sense? I think if I was to summarize it to a word, <laughs> um, my alternative word would probably be service. And mm-hmm. and that um, well, I have my own faith and in, in, in my faith I often pray asking that the opportunities that I need to support my community would be there so that I can serve and that the things that would help would potentially make me lose who I am are just taken away from me so I don't lose that spirit of service that my family and community have instilled in me um, that we do things because it's the right thing to do not because we might be paid for it or because it uh, might get recognition yes there has been some recognition along the way which is which has been phenomenal and to be able to say this is something which we've collectively worked for but ultimately the just knowing lives are better for other people and that's that's 100 percent what motivates my family and i i know that we're we're as a country in in the pacific new zealand is is getting much much closer um to where we need to be around understanding the importance of mental health and well-being outside of a political space it's always going to be political to some extent because it involves you know tax and and spending of tax there is significant hope that things are getting better and from my perspective they are it is slow and i suppose the vision that we've created in he ara oranga on behalf of uh, hundreds of thousands of new zealanders who participated in the mental health predictions inquiry in 2018 which the government has, has taken up and parliament has taken up, which is quite unique to this inquiry compared to others, where um, we made a specific recommendation asking parliament to have a cross-party working group on mental health so that we could take out the political football and it could end up being centred around people's lived realities. But like at the moment, we're dealing with unmet support that people are calling for, as well as with the increased awareness, more people are asking for support so we're definitely not at the at the point where we're c- completely open and 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 people are completely comfortable, but that has shifted and services are changing. So we're having far more indigenous services that have been funded by our government, um, and and particularly uh, if I was for one one change, uh, one the biggest change probably in the last couple of years has been a recognition from the country and broader than just the government that we don't just need a clinical workforce. So our doctors and nurses, which are so essential, but actually mental health and wellbeing has to live in communities. And often we can support someone far, far earlier by there being an art program in their community, a young mum's play group with the bubs and that being funded or any anything that helps people feel well in their communities so that that part is the bit that often hasn't been looked at as part of well-being spectrum so that's the part that uh, we've directed the country and the country has picked up in a, in a most collective way possible despite there being lots of different political uh, positioning about what the, what the vehicles and the methods might be but just generally that there needs to be a broader way so and in a, in, a, in a sentence, to summarise what I've said, it is getting better. It's far too slow, but it is getting better. And we have to own the wins that we've got. Like if you had a magic wand, what would you like to see? <laughs> that's, it's, that's a tough one. Um, there's so many different little dreams or, or visions or wishes. But I think one of the, one of the key things would be generally government and decision makers and well-being showing that they are listening and and whether that is someone writes their story to them or or meets them on the street uh, or whatever way they might hear about what's going on for someone that each person who comes to them with what's what's important to them and when they hear about that that story that they can show that person empathy regardless of the political situation and i know all the 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 health professionals, leaders and decision makers are absolutely trying their best. But often these processes, which we need, might remove the humanity from that situation. And and that was one of the things that 
New Zealanders asked for after the inquiry, please keep it people centred. And if that could happen, I think that would be a huge thing. And that might not involve any more spending.